morning, Turners. Yeah, yeah, we had a nice group uh, Tuesday that came out. Did everything. Got to decorate downstairs too. So, hey, Sophie.
Well, good morning to everybody. We welcome you to our first Sunday of the new year. It is our Advent season, and so we are anticipating, of course, that wondrous news that we hear again about the birth of Christ on Christmas Day. So just a couple of announcements. You do need to look at the bulletin for today. There are quite a lot of announcements in our bulletin for today uh, that we ask you to pay attention to. In particular, next week, after our 9.30 a.m. service, we will go straight downstairs. Uh, we will, I know that many of the uh, Adam family will be here, and uh, they, we will be dedicating the hall downstairs to uh, Michael Adam and, and uh, Joe McMinn, and we're certainly grateful for their, their witness to Christ, and of course their support of this church over the years. And so we will be doing that downstairs, so afterwards we'll have that luncheon, and uh, that of course is a gift of our four dollars to you. And so we just want to say very Christmas to you with that. Take a look at the needs for the food shelf. We certainly have a lot of needs right now, and we've uh, wiped our food shelf out over Thanksgiving. We certainly appreciate your support of that. Uh, you notice we do have the Oplucky in the back. You're welcome to grab that for you and for family. If you've never used Oplucky before as a part of your tradition, it is one of the traditions that our ancestors here, our Slovak ancestors, have passed on to us that I would like to see us continue. Even if you're not Slovak, it is a wonderful opportunity for you to include this as part of your Christmas meal with your family. And then on the back page, I do want to point out the home group of small devotionals. There is an opportunity for you, for all of us as a church, to participate in the same Bible study once a week as we prepare our hearts for this Christmas season. So please take a look at that. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, ask me. But every single member of this church has, can register for a free account with Right Now Media. All you do is ask me. I will send you an invitation uh, through your email, and you just sign up. The only emails you'll get from this company are about these videos that are being out, uh, that they have, the new videos that they've had. They will not sell your email or share it with anybody else. It is very specific to this site, but it is a wondrous resource of a whole lot of different Bible studies. In fact, uh, youth group, we have been using one of these resources for the youth group. Uh, this Wednesday, we continue that study, and again, we, we've been really enjoying these uh, videos for the uh, for that Bible study. So that's it. So please take a look at that. And again, if you don't know how to access that, ask me, and I will help you, because I think it is a wonderful thing. The, the videos that we're showing for our Advent small home groups, are, are literally a 10 minute video that you can watch with your family before or after dinner. And then just look at the, uh, the Greek verse. It would be fantastic. You do a little old devotional once a week with your family during Advent. I think that would really uh, be a wondrous commitment for you to grow your faith and your faith of your family. Okay, that is it, I think, for announcements. Sunday school immediately followed uh, today, uh, our worship service, and then also youth group will be this Wednesday. I misspoke last week. It's always the first of the third Wednesday, so we do have it this Wednesday. Okay, I'm done. Let's take a breath, because this season is a quiet season, and so let us uh, prepare our hearts for worship with the light of the Advent Week today. Isaiah writes, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Today we remember that prophet of old who demanded to be heard, who dared to speak of a child to come, an unexpected liberator of people, and vulnerable incarnation of the holiest of holies. 
new name for God. So today we give thanks for the prophets amongst us who bring to us surprising new visions of hope, who show us a future that we had never anticipated. So on this first Sunday of Advent, we light this candle as a symbol of the prophets who renew our faith and remind us of what may be. Let us sing our opening hymn today. Blow me comes with clouds to sing. Oh, Lord. 
Lord God of hosts, call on your name of you. You have fed them with the bread of tears, and you have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore to us, O oh God of hosts, let your face shine upon us, and us be saved. And then verse 17. Let your hand be upon the one in your right hand. The one in your hand is so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us a and call upon your name. To store us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, Sophie back there and said, 
Isn't she gonna be a doll? I can't wait for her to be born. And I'm gonna wait until she's born so I can just love her. Oh, and I bet you, 2,000 years ago, God spoke to me saying, I bet you, Sophie's gonna have great, 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 many generations now that are gonna be just as beautiful, and I can't wait to see them too. God is not as cynical as we are about the world. See, we think the world is falling to pieces. God is saying, oh my gosh, there's so many wonderful people to love. So we have to always keep that in mind when we create these end time lessons. And so I want to set up this context. The previous lessons took place after Jesus' final confrontation with the scribes and the Pharisees, okay? But this lesson also takes place normally between what we call the Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and his ultimate crucifixion on the cross. Jesus is now with his disciples in Jerusalem as much as he was in the lessons of last week. That is an important thing to know. Why then would Jesus be talking about this lesson? He's referring to a temple that was going to be destroyed. This was the third temple called Herod's Temple that was created in Jerusalem. The first two had been destroyed. Uh, the construction of the temple of this third temple was begun in about 19 B.C., about 14 years before Jesus was born, and apparently it was an amazing, wondrous building to behold. From all the people who had seen it, all the reports outside of the Bible that we see about it, it was commissioned by a guy named Herod, who, by the way, wasn't even a Jew, but he was the ruler and the king of the Jews. All this political maneuvering that he did, he thought by building a temple, he would win the hearts of the Jewish citizens. This is the father of Herod who put Jesus to death. Not the same guy, though. So make sure you keep that in mind. The temple was never completed. It was ultimately destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans, and it was never rebuilt. There's nothing but rubble there, and now on top of that rubble is placed the dome on top, which is a Muslim, uh, which is a Muslim place of worship. The temple was an object of great beauty, apparently, like I said. It was a source of Jewish pride, and so the disciples of Jesus pointed out saying, oh, isn't this just such a wondrous thing? How lovely this building is. This is the problem when people get confused and think that God is represented by buildings and spaces. I have always consistently told this congregation since I've been here that if we were to come back someday and this building were, I don't know, somebody put some sticks of dynamite around the walls and blew the building to pieces, which I would hate to say, by the way, the church is the people that would show up next week. This is not about a building. It's about the people. And this is the problem that Jesus' disciples were confusing the building as though it was the place of worship. This is not the church. This is not the church. You are the church. Okay? You're the reason why God came. God didn't come to build monuments and buildings that were impressive in which to reside. Jesus came to reside in your hearts because he adores you and he loves you. And this is what this lesson about Jesus is trying to remind his disciples. It's not about the dang building. The temple's going to be destroyed. Well, that caused a lot of consternation, right? This was his prediction. He predicts again the destruction of the temple, which would be an astonishing thing, since so much of Jewish identity was uh, into that temple. Now, as I said, all we have is that will and all left. The structure of the temple would be interpreted as though God had abandoned them. But Jesus is reminding them that we are not people of a building, we're not people of a land. This is the problem with the Zionistic Christians who want the Jews in the promised land so the prophecy of the Bible can be fulfilled. The problem with that view is the Jews are no longer people of the land. They're no longer people of the promised land. They're people of the book. And we are also people of the book. The same, what is that book called again? Oh, that's right. We are people of the God proclaimed in this book. Jesus Christ. Okay? So let's not confuse our buildings and the structures we build with Jesus. So the destruction of the building required them to rethink their theology and what they believed about God. And so here's what this means to us. 
We should not place our hope in this building, in our programs, not even in our pastors, certainly not our institutions, and definitely not our country, even the good old U.S. of A. It isn't about that, right? Where is our hope in this season when we look and we see all the chaos in this world? Jesus says we've got to look in a different direction. Yes, the world is a little bit crazy right now. But we have a place where we can turn, where we know no matter how chaotic this world might get, we have hope in Him. So a tragic event such as the destruction of the temple, or I don't know, the war that's going on in Gaza right now. It's a tragic event. That is not the ending of the world. Even amidst this heartache and despair, God promises to be present. So let's bring it home a little bit more. I'm ignoring this right now because this is what I really want to get to across you today. Because maybe that distant thing in Israel or in Ukraine, so distant we don't even think about the chaos there. Maybe in your own household you have chaos going on right now. Maybe you've got a family member who's struggling with cancer. Maybe, maybe you've got broken relationships between siblings and parents. Maybe, maybe you lost your job and you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Your chaos is very real. So where is Jesus saying he is? In the midst of all the chaos of this world, I promise to be with you. Yes, he says, stay awake, stay alert. You don't know when these tragedies will take place. But I'm reminding you that I will be present with you today. So this lesson is really important. Let's skip down to verse that, that's number two. Because many of our human institutions, it looks like they're on the verge of collapse. And many American Christians have placed their identity being American, our country. My hope is not for the United States of America. Is it now? It never has been. I love my country. I would never speak against it that way. But I know that God will be with us no matter what our future holds. God is not in a country. God is in us. So Jesus' words are meant to be a comfort to us that we watch. Because God will not let us drown no matter what chaos happens in our lives. God is a God who is out of the chaos, created order of the universe. God is a God who out of death brings new life. This is who Jesus is. God is a God who out of the destruction of our human-made institutions blesses the world with the most important thing of all, His love. So let us not despair of so in this season of hopefulness. This is why we celebrate Advent. And what an appropriate time. Yeah, the world looks like it's in chaos right now, but never fear. Even amidst the chaos, bring, God brings newness of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you again that uh, we know that out of the chaos in the Middle East, out of the chaos in Ukraine, you are present. And we pray for your peace ultimately to reign in these places. But we know that there's chaos in our own hearts and in our own homes. We know that there are people who are struggling with traumatic things that are going on. Right now, just don't know where to turn. Well, we turn to you. That's why we stay awake. That's what you told us. Stay awake. Look up. Our hope doesn't come from institutions. Our hope doesn't come from pastors. Our hope doesn't come from countries or presidents. Our hope comes from Jesus. And so whatever these days might bring, God, let us turn up and look to you and be filled with the hope that we are in your hands, that you love us so much that you waited for us to be born. And for that, we give thanks for this opportunity and privilege of life. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing our hymn of the day.
today, the king shall come.
pastors and congregations in our Slovak Zion Center, as well as in our community, we lift up Manna from Ohio, New Day Ministries, and St. John Orthodox. You help us be good partners to one another and encourage each other that we might be more effective in witnessing to this community of East Pittsburgh. We are also grateful for those who served our country, many of whom are away from home at this time. Uh, and we just pray that we continue to be with them. And so we also lift up those unable to worship with us for Pauline and Arlene and Peggy and Dorothy and Mary Jo and Gil. You continue to surround them with your love. Lord, whatever else is on our hearts and minds, we take a moment of silent prayer to lift all of these concerns to you. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all those for whom we pray and we trust in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. So you can please share a sign of God's peace with your brothers and sisters. We'd like you to turn in front of your hymn books to page 206. We will be <coughs> using the great Thanksgiving as an introduction to our Holy Communion this day. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God, and maker of all things. For it is through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, our possessions. Use us in all that has been gathered in here this day, that we might feed the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times, in all places, give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ. For you comforted your people with the promise of a Redeemer, through whom you also make all things new in that day when he comes to judge the world with his righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels in the church and earth, with the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God.
darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, the word made flesh. For as he in the night which he was betrayed took bread, blessed it, gave it to his disciples, said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, and after he blessed it, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink from all of it, for this cup is a new covenant. My blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us therefore proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ has come again. And so it is, with this bread and cup, we remember your word, dwelling amongst us full of grace and truth, and remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. And so, holy God, we long for the gift of your Holy Spirit to come amongst us, to heal us. Bless this meal that we receive this day. May your word take flesh amongst us, awaken your people, fill us with your light, and bring us the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory be yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to prepare the meal which God has provided. For, again, the, uh, the elements are in the rear of the sanctuary. On the left is your exiting. You're welcome to grab that. Everyone is welcome to partake this day. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus bless you and keep you in his grace and peace. Let us pray. Holy Father, we do give you thanks again for the refreshing gift of this new life that we found in Jesus Christ. We pray that you would bless us that we might be a blessing to this world. Your hands and your feet. For you ask us all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now receive the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you and pray and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our closing.
say verses 1, 3, and 4. Sunday. We will see you next week.